Hello, my name is John Haddish, and I'm a molecular plant science graduate student in the Dr. Figlin's Bioinformatics Lab at Washington State University. Today I'm going to be talking to you briefly about GemMaker. GemMaker is a workflow that the Figlin lab developed to handle the processing of large RNA-seq datasets to count data. GemMaker arose when the Ficklin lab was attempting to process a very large Arabidopsis thaliana dataset consisting of all publicly available reads from NCPI. This totaled about 26,000 reads. The project took up a large amount of space on disk and, result, and when we were processing it, the intermediate files resulted in us needing to constantly clean up our directories to avoid filling up even our large 70 terabyte system on our high performance computing cluster. We realized that the RNA-seq reads and the intermediate files were not really what we were interested in. Uh, but, and we did not need them for our final analysis. From this arose GemMaker. GemMaker is a Nextflow workflow that is capable of downloading RNA-seq reads from NCBI, processing them to count data, and uh, using common tools such as HiSat2, Salmon, and Callisto, and uh, while cleaning up the files of the intermediate processes as it goes. This prevented our file system from being filled up while retaining all the output we desired. In the process of making this, we dockerized the dependencies and made it compatible with NFCore. We believe that this makes GemMaker rather easy to use and portable and allows it to be ran on most Linux-based operating systems, including high-performance computing clusters, without the need to download or install any bioinformatics software packages. The information on the second part of my poster describes the basic outline of what it takes to run GemMaker on your own data. The first step is to make sure that your machine has Singularity and Nextflow installed. Singularity is a package manager uh, that is capable of running Docker images on a variety of machines without the need for root privileges. We chose to use Singularity over Docker because of this, as it allows it to be ran on many uh, high-performance computing clusters where you users typically do not have pseudo privileges. Nextflow is a workflow manager that will run all the programs you need from the, for the pipeline and controls the parallelization of all your samples. You will notice that I did not say that you need to install GemMaker. This is because GemMaker is NFCore compatible and Nextflow will automatically download GemMaker the first time it is ran. After installing the two dependencies, Singularity and Nextflow, the user must locate their RNA-seq reads in the genome or transcriptome of the organism they are attempting to align to. This is um, dependent on, uh, their des on your desired outcome. You may choose to use uh, one, of the three, or one of the three different tools that we have. These are HiSat2, Salmon, and Callisto. HiSat2 will actually align the reads to the genome so that the user can choose to keep an intermediary file showing where they actually align in the stack up of these. Salmon and Callisto are quantifying the genes, and so you will not actually get your actual alignments, but rather just the counts. No matter which workflow you choose, you will need to make the proper index from your genome. Information on how to make this index can be found at, on the GemMaker documentation. The user's RNA-seq reads can be located on a local machine, high-performance compute cluster, or be published reads located on NCBI. For the latter, the user simply gives a list of the desired SRAs, and GemMaker will download and process them. The third step is to run GemMaker using Nextflow. GemMaker is NFCore compatible and will automatically be downloaded the first time it is ran using Nextflow. On my poster, you will see an example of what a typical command looks like to run GemMaker. The user declares the index they made for, for their genome, where their RNA-seq reads are, either local or remote, on NCBI, and what quantification tool they wish to use. In addition, the user can declare how many parallel runs they wish GemMaker to perform and how many resources they wish it to use. This uh, makes GemMaker rather uh, customizable and even large runs can be re ran relatively quick given the proper compute resources. The fourth step is actually performed by GemMaker, 
but I wanted to highlight it here because it is one of the main reasons that we actually made GemMaker. Uh, the graph you see has uh, on the y-axis shows how much how many terabytes of data GemMaker used up and on the x-axis shows uh, time to completion and these we made it so it's from 0 to 100 percent complete. Uh, you will, uh, the dashed lines represent runs which did not have any cleanup steps whereas the solid lines located in the very bottom of the graph show when GemMaker is being used when, when GemMaker is used to clean up all the files. You will notice that the dashed lines quickly balloon and take up most of the storage on the space, the storage on the machine. Whereas when GemMaker is used to clean up everything, it is, uh, it is kept to a relatively manageable amount. Finally, our last step, which goes beyond what GemMaker uh, does, is to use our processed, the process count data in a different program. Uh, such as for differential expression using dseq2 or edgeR, or to make a co-expression network using tools such as WGCNA or Kink. Additionally, any intermedi intermediary files you chose to save can be used as well. I want you to I want to thank you for stopping by my poster, and, and encourage you to check out GemMaker at the GitHub link located at the bottom of my poster. There is complete documentation on the steps you need to take to get started, as well as troubleshooting sections. Thank you.